Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back to those of you who um, are faithful viewers here and a first time welcome to anyone who is brand new. So today is a day of errands. I have built up errands over the last 72 hours because we have had fevers going through the house. I finally was like, Warren, I have so many work-related things that take me out of the house I have to get done. So he is home holding down the fort with the feverish kids here today and I am out running errands. I just dropped off cookbooks um, going to Chicago, Texas, Georgia, Georgia, South Carolina. So thank you so much for those orders. I always have the link in the description box uh, if you're interested in ordering a cookbook or any other merch. You can check my website. There's other things there too. What I did this morning, because since I was going to be alone in the car, I thought it would be the perfect time to do a Q&A video. And I see other YouTubers do things similar to this, where they put up a question box over on Instagram, ask for questions. And so let's check this out. I don't know how to do the cutesy where they like show the the question box with the question. I, I, I don't know how to do that. And I know you guys are like, oh, Jennifer, she's techie. She has a YouTube channel. No, Jennifer's not techie. <laughs> she just knows exactly what she needs to know to get by. Let's take a quick break to thank today's sponsor, Element. Continued research is showing that hydrating with water alone may be diluting your natural electrolytes. Element is the perfect choice to replenish electrolytes with no added sugar, coloring, or artificial ingredients. It contains a science-backed ratio of sodium, potassium, and magnesium to offer the most benefits. At my age, sleep is increasingly becoming a trouble spot in my day, and I've found some relief by sipping iced Element throughout my day. I like to start off by adding about one-fourth of a packet to my Bucky's cup, filling with a couple inches of water, stir to dissolve, and then fill the cup with ice. I sip on this until lunch, and I repeat the process and do it again, uh, getting in at least two full cups of element water a day. Look at what other viewers have to say. Alicia says, I have been drinking Element for over a year now. I just used the unflavored packets and make it about one-fourth the strength they recommend. I feel like it has helped with my migraines. And Lianca says, I love Element. Been using them for a year now. Grapefruit is my favorite. Right now, Element is offering my viewers a free sample pack with any order. That's eight single-serve packets free with any Element order. This is a great way to try all eight flavors. Do you like spicy? They have that covered. How about chocolate? They have that covered. And if some of the flavors aren't for you, it's a great way to share them with a salty friend. <laughs> Get yours at drinkelement.com slash a country life. This deal is only available through my link. You must go to d-r-i-n-k-l-m-n-t dot com slash a country life first time and returning Element customers may claim this offer. And again, thanks to Element for sponsoring today's video. First question is from JLS Lore, and she says, how are your older kids doing? I miss them in your videos. They are all doing very well. We have seven kids, if you're new here, and they range in age. Our oldest is 25, almost 26, down to 10. No more single digit babies for us except for grandkids. <laughs> I don't like to share too much information about their life just because it's their life. If they wanted it to be out there they would have to just start their own YouTube channel, right? Uh, sometimes they're over at our place and I say, hey, is it okay if you're, you know, in the in a video or something? And they are like, sure. I did spill the beans in a recent video two of our kids, so we have one married um, with two grandchildren there, and then two are engaged. One just graduated. He is in the working world and just making his way through all of that. To those moms out there with littles and only littles and or maybe even they're they're approaching that that uh, preteen age and you're kind of starting to feel a little bit uh, sad about oh the little years are gone and the cutesy cutesy years are gone. You know what? There's always more. There's always more fun to be had, and there's oh, there are always more adventures, and it's good. Sometimes hard, 
but always good. <laughs> Big Mama, she asks, how did you get your YouTube to grow? Well, it's been slow. It has been slow. I think I've been doing this for seven years for sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it has been seven years now. And I think the best way to get a YouTube channel to grow is to know what your niche is. And do you say niche, niche? I say niche. Um, to know your niche and really make your videos very specific to that, especially at the beginning. I did not do that. I was sort of trying homeschooling, trying cooking, trying day in the lifes. Well, day in the lifes are a hard thing to get going because someone is interested in your day in your life because they are your friend. <laughs> and you have to kind of build that, those friendships with your audience. Yep, we've got people walking by. They're like, what is she doing? Why is she holding up her camera? So as far as growth, just watch your analytics and see what videos do the best and continue to do more videos like that. And that helps your channel to grow. That's really the best information I can give you. Um, yeah, growth really just comes from asking your viewers to uh, share your videos is a good way too because then, you know, they have like-minded friends who might want to see um, similar material, you know, similar content to what they like. El Mundo asks, what's your go-to treat to take to a potluck? For sure, peanut butter swirl bars. That is in cookbook one, I know for sure. If I ask Warren, he always wants me to take ginger bars, but ginger bars are such a plain looking bar that, there, there's usually leftovers and maybe that's why he always asks me to take it because then I bring the leftovers home and he gets to eat them um, but they are delicious another favorite if there's going to be lots of adults there would be cranberry bars with cream cheese frosting and that also is in cookbook one I think all four of these are in cookbook one and then my last go-to depending on the situation would be uh, the chocolate chip blondie bars but I sub in Oreos and cookies and cream. I have that written in the notes of that recipe as well, which is also in cookbook one. I'll link to, well, I already said that. They're always linked in the description box below. So those are my go-tos. All right, and it's time to keep moving. Literally, I think it's 100% humidity. Well, it couldn't be because it'd be raining, right? But it's like 98% humidity right now and the car is heating up, so I need to keep moving on. I have to drop some things off. Oh my gosh, it is loud in town. Drop some things off here at the UPS. And the question is, will they accept it like this? This one, yes. This one, we'll see. I'm so sad to have to send this rug back. It just, it is so beautiful. So, so, so beautiful. But it does not fit in the space where I wanted to put it. And so I have to send it back. And they don't have the right size. Ugh. UPS happily took that package. So there you have it. You don't even have to have it in any kind of fancy package. That was just like the thick plastic wrap that the rug came in. So Smoky Mountain Sarah asks, is the bobcat over the TV, the one Warren had been hunting in one of the videos? If I remember correctly, he was actually hunting a beaver that was causing some problems down on the cranberry marsh. And the bobcat is one that he trapped. And so in Wisconsin, you have to apply for a tag. And I think you might have to earn, get so many points, like apply for so many years, and then you're issued a tag and, and a permit and that kind of thing. And so he got that like two years ago now, I believe, on our property. Smoky Mountain Sarah also asks, did y'all ever see the bear that got into the bees? I believe Warren might have seen it one time. We have bear neighbors have bear they're they're around so was it the same exact one it's hard to know smoky mountain sarah asks have you been to dollywood no uh smoky mountain sarah asks will you ever do a video of peter showing off his furs from trapping you know that's interesting because i think when i first started um, my channel i had a little bit of trapping content on here not a whole lot um, I suppose, I mean, if it's something that you guys would like to see, I mean, give this video a thumbs up. The more thumbs ups that this video gets, I mean, I can show trapping content. It's not 
a problem for me, but I know that there is a big population that that would be bothersome to. I mean, it is my channel, so I don't know. I go back and forth. Maybe this year. Maybe this year Peter will want to show off some of his furs. Carol asks, what is Sam doing now that he's graduated? He is working full-time and making his way in the working world. Beckel fed? Beckel Feld? I'm not sure. As your kids are getting older, are you planning on continuing with YouTube? Yes, I'm planning on continuing with YouTube, I guess, probably until if YouTube goes away, then obviously it'll be done. Uh, Kay Doyle asks, intimidated by homeschooling advice. My best advice is to relax. And rather than maybe trying to plan out in the beginning, trying to plan out everything that you're going to do, do a, instead of what we are going to do, do a what we did. Sort of like a little log or a little diary each day and just kind of map down on there, you know, what types of things came up, what kinds of questions did your kids ask and then you figured out the answers to. What types of activities and, um, you know, what are just all the ways that they learned that day. Just kind of keep track of that for a while. Do lots of reading, lots of audiobooks, take your kids out and about on out out and about through town, just kind of all the things that you do. I guess involve them in all the things that you do and see where their interests take them. And that's just a great I think that's a great way to get started when you're kind of like I just don't even know. Get a couple inexpensive workbooks. They I mean, if you want them to be Christian workbooks, do that. If you don't, I mean, there, there's thousands of different workbooks out there. Just get something that you can, maybe your kids do two pages a day. There's lots of workbooks out there that are just general fifth grade or general kindergarten. And they have all the subjects all in one workbook. And you can do something like that where you just do a few pages every day and things will come up. Oh goodness topics will come up that they will be interested in and that they want to learn more about. Things will come up that they've never heard of and then you will dive into those and different things will pop up that you'll find that they have a gap in that area and then you will focus on that and you'll just keep moving about and pretty soon a couple years will be under your belt and you'll be like, oh my goodness, they have come so far. Okay, it's starting to get sticky in here. Beckelfeld also asks, what do you see in the future for Joe? Are you considering any kind of job training? Well, his... Um, right now, I mean, he doesn't get out of all the work at home, and so he he is definitely job training just at home with different chores and things like that that he has to do. He also just joined a program this summer. He's only gone one time. Second time was canceled. We're going to give it a try again, and that has some opportunities for him uh, through a local program where he would do activities, meet some friends, things like that. So we'll see where that leads. Joe's speech seems to have reached a plateau. Thoughts on revisiting speech therapy? Um, I'm always thinking about different things to help Joe. One thing to remember is that not everyone with Down syndrome is going to have the same uh, speech ability. There are other diagnoses, diagnoses that go along with um, Down syndrome at times, and those can affect speech as well. And I never rule out anything. We always just take it day by day, month by month, year by year, and see what we think that he needs at that moment. I know that the shadowing is kind of crazy in here. I'm going to head in now. We bought half a hog, and so I have to go in and pick that up. All righty, you are Thank all set you. to go. Thank Thanks. you much. You have a good one. <laughs> Thanks, you too. Okay, so this is what a half a hog looks like. This is the first time we've purchased from this particular farm and gotten meat from this particular processing plant. So I'm gonna get this all laid out and I will give you guys a total at the end. I know a lot of people kind of wonder about, you know, like how much does it cost to buy straight, straight from a farm? How much does it cost? And so I'm going to uh, just kind of break this down for you guys. All right, so this is all of the meat, all of... Okay, so this is everything that I got from the butcher today, and I paid the butcher $105. I'll have to look at what I paid the farmer because, you know, you that that's how it works. Because typically what happens is you you call the farm that you're interested in buying from and 
you let them know if you want a half or a whole or what it is, beef, pork, whatever it happens to be that they're selling. And then they tell you, we think it's gonna be ready in mid-August. So then you wait around, you get a call from the farmer. They say, all right, your half a hog has gone in and they wanna know like what cuts of meat. Actually, in this case, they wanted the cuts up front. So she gave me a sheet and I X'd out all the different, I put an X in all the places of what types of cuts I wanted and how I wanted it packaged, if I wanted pork chops in two or four, or you know, whole ham, half ham, that kind of thing. So then it goes to the butcher, the butcher does all of the smoking and the wrapping and all of that, and then the butcher called me a couple days ago and said, okay, your meat is ready. And so I paid the farmer separately for the hanging weight and you know, for like, it, it's everything that has to do with the raising of the animal, and then I pay the butcher for the cost of the processing and the smoking. And here's what we got. We have, I got two smoked ham roasts, and one is almost eight pounds, and this one, actually both of them are just under eight pounds. I did get the pork hocks because, well, I, I mean, I went for everything that they offered. And so the smoked pork hocks are really, really, great in soup. Let's say you're making split pea and ham soup or any kind of ham and bean soup. These work really great in that. Even if you don't want to pick the meat off the bone, which seems like that would be crazy to me to not want to do that, but you can even just cook this with beans to flavor the beans if you'd like to do that. I don't know how many packs of bacon there are, but the bacon are all right around 0.8 pounds. Here's a one pound pack of bacon. 0 0.73, 0 0.79, 0 0.79. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I think 10 packages of bacon. I have six packages and these I believe are one pound. It doesn't say it on here, but I'm thinking these are the one pound um, packages of breakfast sausage I went with because this is just so ver versatile for making those egg bites or why can't I think of it biscuits and gravy and that kind of thing here are the pork chops so I have some packs of pork chops that are anywhere from 2.7 1.9 pounds 3.0 2.2 2.3 so five packages of pork chops remember this is a half Hog, and so just one small pack of spare ribs here, uh, 1.6 pounds. I did, uh, when they offered the lard, I said yes. I have to look at, I've never rendered lard, but I'm going to look at what has to be done for that because I do use lard, and so I'd like to uh, figure out how to do that. Here are some fresh ham steaks, and these are big, 1.4, 1.5, 1.4 and 1.3 for the ham steaks, four of them. One pork Boston butt. That's the one that has that big layer of fat on top. You cook that all down and then turn it into like pulled pork or something. There might be a bone in there. I'm not sure. Uh, a pork shoulder roast at four pounds. The pork butt is almost six pounds. A fresh ham roast and a second fresh ham roast. Now, honestly, I'm going to have to look that up because I don't know the difference between pork shoulder, pork butt, and fresh ham roast. So I don't know if maybe that would be considered like a picnic roast, if that's what they mean by that. I don't know. Oh, and we're back to the smoked pork hocks. So that is everything for people who are meat eaters like us. It is always so fun to get like this big uh, pile of meat all at once. And now it's kind of like, oh, my wheels are, my wheels are spinning as to what am I going to make with all of this meat? Okay, I know that it is hot 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 in so many other parts of the country because you know i'm way up north here but it is reading 102 right now and they're putting out all these warnings about heat heat indexes and everything so yeah that's why and i'm sitting outside warren's like why are you going outside i said because i like the heat but my skin is uh, definitely wearing the air right now okay we have a couple more questions before i take this question box down here and 
what do we have here? Maria Maria Chicago asks, what is the population of the town you live in and what is the main profession there? Well, the town that I live in, um, I know that we have about 116 registered registered voters and I know that because I am a chief election officer uh, I don't know what our total population is but it can't be a whole lot more than that whatever the kids in the community would be and then the main profession here is agriculture cranberry industry some somehow pretty much like 95 percent of the people in our town are involved in cranberries in some way shape or form instagram handles are always hard to like know how to pronounce these dana gale uh, asks who is your oldest child emily or nick emily is older than nick by 16 months <laughs> christina berry 1956 wants to know where am I going and is it legal to use my phone while I'm driving first let me just say I can't even drink a cup of coffee while I drive without spilling it on me so I'm definitely not using my phone while I drive I was out and about around like multiple different towns town one town two town three town four four different towns today like just at my stops that's when I did my filming of course you guys have a fantastic uh, afternoon right here. I'll put a couple other Q&As up for you guys just in case you want to watch those. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.